prob list. Uh, so, today I am going to uh, tell you about you know one particular area that is inspired by statistical physics and has been um, of great interest to prob list for the last uh, two or three decades. So, you know hopefully by the end of the talk I would also have some time to tell you about uh, a little bit about what I do in this area. So, this is the area about uh, of, of randomly growing interfaces uh, more particularly randomly growing interfaces in the Kadar Parishi Zhang universality class. So, uh, we will be talking about randomly growing interfaces in 1 plus 1 dimension which means 1 space dimension and 1 time dimension. So, what is the simplest possible model you can think of randomly growing interface in uh, in this 1 plus 1 dimensional setting. So, probably the, the simplest model you can think about is uh, you have this locations and each of the locations you have a height that grows uh, with independent increments and uh, central limit theorem will tell you in such a situation such a very simple situation uh, the height fluctuations will be diffusive. So, at time t some large time t the fluctuations of the height will be of order square root t and the scaling limit if you subtract of the mean and divide by the square root of t you will have uh, the Gaussian uh, distribution as a scaling limit. So, this is uh, the very well known and ubiquitous Gaussian universality class and it is the behavior is universal because the Gaussian nature of the limit does not depend on the microscopic details of the model. Uh, so, as long as the individual increment distributions are sufficient in nines have uh, square moments and little bit more you have this, this Gaussian distribution. So, naturally such a simple model will, will not be able to cover most processes of of interest most naturally occurring random growth processes. So, there is a different universal behavior that, that occurs in, in many naturally um, occurring uh, physical processes where uh, the behavior is slightly different uh, in, in these two. So, there are a, a list of uh, conditions I have written, but I want to point uh, specific attention to points 3 and 4 uh, which is what makes these type of processes different from the, the one in the Gaussian universality class. So, first of all there is a lateral growth where the speed is slope dependent. I will explain with an example what that means and there is also a relaxation mechanism which means that valleys are filled more quickly. So, if you have a valley then the height there increases more quickly than if you have a peak. I will again give an example. So, uh, because of this relaxation mechanism what you would expect is that the, the surface the interface will be less rough. So, previously we talked about the square root t fluctuation. So, this interface was quite rough. But with the relaxation mechanism, you expect the height fluctuation will be subdiffusive, and it turns out that the scaling limit in this case is actually not Gaussian. So this this uh, this type of processes do not belong to the, the Gaussian universality class. So there are many examples. Uh, a few of the interesting examples are ballistic deposition model and corner growth model. And and without uh, trying to explain all of this, let me just give you a concrete example of uh, a corner growth model. So, obviously you can start with many different initial condition, but uh, this is one special uh, rather nice initial condition which is called the step initial condition or the or the wedge initial condition. So, you start with a, a v shaped height function and then your height function evolves by changing corners uh, you know filling corners. So, if you whenever you have a corner of this shape at rate 1 this valley becomes a peak. Okay, so, um, how does it work? So, you had this. So, we had only one corner. So, after a random amount of time this corner gets filled and you have this. So, now there are two corners. So, either of them can get filled in the next step. Uh, so, maybe this one gets filled. So, now you have again two corners again one of them can get filled first maybe this one. Now, you have three corners. So, any of these three can uh, get filled next. So, so this is how the height function evolves. Now, no. One of the uh, reasons of interest in, in this uh, in this type of growth process is this this paper that was uh, at least to prob list uh, it this paper that was uh, written by Kardar Parish and Zhang in, in 1986 and this is one of the most influential paper uh, physics papers in, in probability theory in, in the last few decades where they did a non rigorous renormalization group analysis of these sorts of growing interfaces and they predicted that the large scale behavior of this type of growth processes are governed by this stochastic partial differential equation. Uh, not go much into this equation, but observe that this is the usual heat equation term, but there is this nonlinearity which comes from the slope dependent uh, slope dependent speed of growth. 
and this uh, this is the randomness which is an independent space time white noise so uh, so what did they find uh, with this uh, non rigorous renormalization group analysis and they predicted uh, the scaling exponent one third of uh, for height fluctuation so instead of scaling exponent half which happens in the, in the gaussian universality class you get a, a smaller scaling exponent of one third and a scaling exponent of two third for correlation length so so what does this mean so you have after some large time t let's say you have uh, this is your height function uh, so the height the typical height the first order behavior will be some constant times t so if you subtract off that constant times t and then you scale uh, in the vertical direction by uh, t to the one third and then the horizontal direction by t to the two third you are supposed to get some non trivial random object okay so this was the prediction of of kadar parisian jump now before moving uh, further let me just tell you why this uh, you know why this phenomenon has been uh, become so interesting both for statistical physicists and for probabilists because this sort of growth it seems it occurs uh, in many natural growth processes so just just a couple of uh, a few examples uh, like in mutant colony bacterial colony formation patterns formed when you burn paper slowly uh, interface between dynamic scattering modes and uh, you know patterns you see when uh, coffee stains are allowed to dry so there there are you know these are a couple of uh, uh, images where you know these are illustrations for these rough surface rough interface that that are formed in in many uh, many physical processes and numerically it seems that they agree uh, no they agree to a large uh, accuracy the, to the prediction of of this uh, this behavior predicted by kardar parishian jha you know mathematically it has been a very different story understanding these uh, processes mathematically has has been very challenging so i'll not talk much about this equation but let me just point out just to make sense of this equation has been a, a real challenge because this nonlinearity makes uh, this equation ill posed so existence uniqueness and regularity theory for this particular stochastic differential equation was developed in in martin harrer's uh, fields medal winning works in the in the last 7 uh, or 8 years so it it has been uh, quite a major challenge but that's that's not uh, what my talk will be about what i am interested in is uh, more to the discrete side in the pre limiting so so remember there was this discrete model a class of discrete growth models which in the it's predicted that in the large time limit they are governed by by this uh, stochastic partial differential equation so what i am interested in the large but finite time uh, regime so the discrete pre limiting process in the in the large time limit so let me give you again uh, a concrete example which is just a rephrasing of the corner growth model that that i gave you before uh, this is just a more convenient language at, le at least i find this a more convenient language to to think about these problems um so what you have you have this positive quadrant in the plane in each vertex you put a random weight and the weights are exponentially distributed so these are all independent exponential variables with mean one and what you're doing is that uh, you take any two points say you take the point 1 1 and the point n n and you look at the upright path that starts from 1 1 and goes to n n say the weight of this path is just some of the weights on the vertices uh contained in this path and what you're interested in is the maximum over all such paths you know this this maximum is called the last passage time from vertex 1 1 to vertex n n uh the connection to the corner growth model that i described before is that this particular quantity t n n is precisely equal to the time it takes for the height at the origin to become n so obviously you know one is just a reparameterization of the other and this this model has been uh, of interest to probabilist and and statistical uh, physicists alike uh, classically because this is connected to the totally asymmetric simple extrusion process a very fundamental interacting particle system the first order behavior the first order uh, behavior of the growth was already identified in early early 80s um and that this process actually belongs to the the kpz universality class was already shown in 2000 by kurt johansen where he showed that if you subtract of the first order term in this case the constant is 4 and you scale by n to the 1/3 that is the kpz predicted exponent it converges to to some distribution it's a distribution from random matrix theory called the gue tracy widom distribution so that's how this uh, this exponent of 1/3 appears in in this model 
and how does the exponent of two third appears. So, not only the point to point uh, last passage times will, will converge, if you actually look at um, a window of length n to the two third around this point n n and look at the collection of passage times from 1 1 to those points, properly centered and scaled, they will converge to a stochastic process, uh, which is a stationary process called airy process minus a parabolic correction. Okay, so, this, this has also been proved uh, you know, by uh, Professor and Spahn and Borodin and Ferrari in, in 2008. So, what I want to point out is that you know, for this particular model, we know a lot. But the fact that we know a lot, because this particular model, there is a magical exact formula that lets us write the probability distribution of this quantity T n n. But physicists believe, and it is supported by experimental evidence, that the microscopic details of the model that you started with this exponential distribution at the vertices, it has nothing to do with this universal behavior. It is believed that if you put some sufficiently nice weights on the on the vertices, you will have the same scaling and the same limit. So, the behavior is supposed to be really universal, although we mathematicians only know it for three or four different distributions of weights, just because in those three or four cases, there is some magical exact formula uh, with which you can write down the probability distribution of the quantity that, that you are interested in. So, much of the much of the literature in this side uh, of, of probability has, has been in the last uh, two decades is to study these exactly solvable models, identify more of these exactly solvable models and, and take appropriate limit to see if one can identify the behavior predicted by the physicist. So, you know there has been a lot of work that has been done in, in, in this uh, context, I will not go through all of this, but most of these work I should point out is, um, is based on finding an exact formula and then analyzing that exact formula in great detail and, and trying to take appropriate limits. You know that has led to a lot of progress, but the problem with uh, this approach is that it is not robust at all. Because of this magical formula, even if you change the weight distribution very slightly, that formula completely breaks down and all this, all this, uh, you know, this analysis that has been done using very deep machinery of mathematics completely falls apart. So, what we have been trying to do in the last five years or so is to try and develop a more geometric understanding of, of these sort of models, which hopefully will be more robust. So, you now when, uh, when I say a more geometric understanding, what do I mean? So, remember we had these paths, right? So, we were taking maximum of many paths. So, when I say develop a more geometric understanding of this model, I mean not only the weight of the path, the weight of the maximum weight path, I also study how does that path look like. So, that path is some curve in the space, right. So, by geometric understanding, I mean I also want to understand how does that path geometrically looks like in the space. Uh, so, you know one, one particular uh, statistic that, that people uh, use to measure uh, that sort of um, statistic is, is to uh, look at the transverse, so called transversal fluctuation of a path. It means how far your path is from the straight line. So, you are looking at two points and there is a path connecting those two points and what you want to study is how far the path goes away from the straight line joining the two paths and that is what is measured by this transversal fluctuation. And, and this exponent of two third comes up in, in that uh, transversal fluctuation as well, which was identified already by Johansson and, and we, have, uh, we have given some uh, quantitative uh, bounds on, on uh, these transversal fluctuations. And uh, what I want to point out is, okay, so there is one more thing and you can ask more sophisticated questions about this path. Like if you have two points, so two points at distance k and both of them going, uh, you took a look at paths going from both of them to some far away point and you ask, you know, do they meet? How long do they spend together? And that sort of question. And these are kind of questions which we can understand, uh, you know, to, to some quantitative uh, accuracy. Turned out is that this sort of understanding actually leads to answers of some of the questions which are not accessible directly uh, from those integrable formulas. So, so one uh, example of that is this. Uh, you know, if you look at this height profile, there's a, you know, it's, it's believed and it's known in the limit, uh, in some sense that the local fluctuation is Brownian. So, so in the pre-limit we have some quantitative bounds towards that effect. And then uh, we also have some results uh, which describe the time correlation of this uh, growing interface of the heights, again under using this geometric understanding. 
So, and then there are a number of other results, which a couple of uh, which I want to draw attention to. One is this question answering this question of Lebowitz ab about TASIP uh, with, a, with a slow bond. Uh, and this is not an integrable model. And then there is also this uh, question about wolf shear fluctuation of area constraint polymer. Again, a model which is not integrable. So, what seems promising is that with this approach, we can at least get to models which are not integrable directly, but some small perturbation of the integrable models or some small, you know, integrable models under some suitable constraint. We are, we are able to get some information on those models. So, this gives us hope that maybe with this approach, we can, we can do something more. Uh, anyway, just to summarize that, uh, you know, it's an important phenomenon, the KPZ universality, and it's, uh, it's mathematically been very challenging to understand. There is this PDE aspect as well as this discrete aspect, which feed into one another. Um, you know, this progress is mostly based on this exact formula, but Im importance of geometric understanding is, is, to, uh, is being, being explored uh, rather recently. So, just, just to finish, one of the major challenges that remain in this, in this model is to extend really to non-integrable model where you don't have any exact formula anywhere. Uh, so, one very interesting example is the Eden growth model, uh, which was uh, introduced to model this bacterial colony growth. The model is that you start with a cluster of a single point, and you grow the cluster just by attaching a neighboring vertex uniformly at random. So, it is believed that, again, you know, this is a simulation of, of that growth model. It is believed that, again, the fluctuations and scaling limits are those given by this KPZ universality uh, prediction, but no rigorous, almost no rigorous evidence is, is present uh, in, in this case. So, that remains a, a major challenge for, for the mathematician. Okay, so I think I'll stop here and I'm happy.